Hello everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to the channel. I am here today with what is going to be part one of a multi-part book haul for the month of June 2020. So I went absolutely crazy this month in June buying media in general. So because of that, What's going to happen is this whole week is going to be filled with my media pickups. First, I'm going to start with my book haul, which I've broken down into two different videos. This one is going to be my media tie-in related book haul. So anything that is a media tie-in book will be included in this video. And then the next video is going to be the rest of my book haul. So everything else that's not media tie-in related. And then I'm still debating. I think I might just break the final rest of the media haul into two different videos. Uh, one with with my 4K and maybe TV on Blu-ray, and then the next one will be DVD, Blu-ray, and probably I'll stick video games in somewhere there. There's only a couple, so I'll stick those in somewhere as well. But yeah, so today we're going to talk media tie-in book haul. So these are all the books that are related in some way or another to a another property. So basically, uh, you know, it could be Star Wars, Star Trek, what else do I got? You know, novelization, superhero thing. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. So the reason I went so crazy this past month is just because basically the stores were opening again and, you know, being locked up for so long, it was safe to do it here with a mask. So that's what I did. And I kind of went crazy. So I hit a couple different uh, Salvation Army. So thrift stores. I hit my second in Charles, a couple of those uh, disc replays, which I'll talk about in my media pickup video. Like I just hit a lot of different stores over, over the weekends because I was able to. So I did. So I have a ton of things that I picked up. Fortunately, most of these things were very cheap. Thank goodness, because the amount of stuff sitting next to me is just absurd. So this is probably, even though it's broken up into what's going to probably be four videos, this is still going to probably be a long one. So hopefully you guys don't mind. But if you do, fortunately, you can skip whatever you don't care about. So that's always good. But so without further ado, this is my June 2020 book haul part one. Let's dive right in. So I'm not 100% sure what is the best way to go about this, but I think I'm just going to go with, you know, place of purchase and then kind of break it down if I can from there. So, for example, all of these books I got from eBay and I'll show all of the Star Trek related books that I got first. So that's one good thing is a lot of these books are related so I can show them all at one time. So we have a lot of Star Trek novelizations, which I'm really happy about. The first one is Star Trek The Motion Picture. So this actually is like Star Trek, the original series, book one of that series, but it is, of course, the novelization. Now, this is often credited to Alan Dean Foster, but that's not true. Alan Dean Foster did not write this one. This one was written by Gene Roddenberry, of course, legendary uh, Gene Roddenberry of Star Trek fame. So first one is Star Trek, the motion picture. And then we have Star Trek, the Wrath of Khan, which is the novelization to book two. And this one was written by Vonda N. McIntyre. I don't, frankly, I've never heard that name before. And then we have uh, Star Trek Episode 3, or not Episode 3, it's not Star Wars, but Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock. This one, so some of these, like I said, I got them on eBay. They were all listed as, as good, but some of these are in worse shape. Like this is one I'll probably end up replacing. You can see it's kind of ripped up. Uh, the the rest of these four, or three, book number Episode 2, so Wrath of Khan, and then the rest of these all came in one lot from one person. Uh, so this one is actually very readable. So this one's okay. It does have some, you know, clipped corners and things like that. And obviously this mega ripped cover, but it'll be all right for the cheap price I paid. And then we have Star Trek episode five. So I am missing episode four. That's actually on its way. So spoiler for my July book haul, but this is another one. The corners ripped for some reason. The big problem with this one, it's not terrible on the cover. I don't even want to open it too far, but I'm going to try to show it there. If you open it too far, it feels like it's coming apart. So I don't know how long this one's going to last. So book five is one I would probably replace sometime down the line. But I think I'll be able to read it for the most part when I actually get to it. But yeah, these are thick novels too for novelizations. But I say, I'll say i say that a lot throughout this uh, video. But So episode five and then not episode. Oh my gosh, Brandon, they're not episodes. It's not Star Wars. I have Star Wars on the brain because that's what I've been reading. Anyway, Star Trek VI, Undiscovered, uh, The Undiscovered Country. Uh, this one is actually in very good shape. This one is written by J.M. Dillard. I didn't mention it, but so is uh, episode... <laughs> uh, so is number five. So I now have 
one, two, three, five, and six of the Star Trek original series films in novelization form, which is really cool. And like I said, book number four will fit right in here uh, when it gets here uh, sometime in the next week or so. So all eBay purchases, I paid the, this one was separate. The first one was separate. I paid, I, I frankly have no clue how much I paid for these things, but this lot was like $4 or $3 a book, I think. So very cheap after shipping. So it was really worth it. So all of these are the first ones I grabbed from eBay this month. So along with Star Trek The Motion Picture, it was actually a buy two, get one free on the eBay store I was shopping at. So I grabbed Battleship, written by Peter David. And this is ridiculous, of course, because this is a novelization of a movie based on a board game. Fantastic. I mean, come on. I know this I've not seen. Obviously, this gets, you know, tons of hate and that's fine. Uh, but I do want to check this out just because, you know, it's a novelization. And it was part of the buy to get one. So excited to add that one to my collection. And then finally, part of that buy to get one was Suicide Squad. So this is one that I really want. As I talked about in my uh, May wrap up last month, my movie wrap up, my media wrap up. I love this movie and I think it's so well done. This is uh, written by Mark. Marv Wolfman, and it is a big one. This novelization is over almost 375 pages, which is just crazy. So really excited to read this one. I'll probably read this one sooner rather than later, just because I want to know more about this world and kind of see where things go. So really excited to add this one to my collection. It was one I bought quickly after watching the film, just because obviously, you know, I'm a novelization guy now, apparently. And so I had to have it after I loved the movie so much. So Suicide Squad by Marv Wolfman is the last one in my buy two, get one free book haul that I grabbed from eBay. This next stack of books were ones I grabbed from my Salvation Armies, which again, if you don't have those, those are just thrift stores. So these were all 50 cents each, which is fantastic. So of course, I'm going to pick them up if I see anything that's media tie-in related. So first, I'll talk about all the Star Trek stuff I grabbed, which this video, if you don't like Star Trek, I apologize because this video is going to be Star Trek heavy, which is ridiculous because I've not even read any of these. And I think in my like January or February bull call, I said, there's no way I'm getting into the Star Trek books because I'm doing Star Wars instead. So these were from a couple different Salvation Armies, but I'm just going to show them as one because, again, same price across the board. So first up, we have Star Trek Time for Yesterday by A.C. Crispin. And this is actually the sequel to uh, Star Trek Yesterday's Sun, which is one I picked up in my Star Trek book haul video, if you remember from a couple months back. These next two are part of the same Star Trek series, and that is The Lost Era, which frankly, I don't know anything about, uh, but I do know they're both from The Lost Era. So this is The Art of the Impossible, and it has years on it. So 2328 to 2346. And then we have The Serpents Among the Ruins, or Serpents Among the Ruins, which I believe this is the first book in that series. And this is Stardate, I'm assuming Stardate, 2311. So I think this is the first one in that series, and this is like the third... I, I've looked up so many books from the Star Trek universe lately that I can't remember them all offhand, but I think this one is like the third or fourth in this four or five book series, something like that. So Lost Era, we have two from that, Serpent Among the, Th the Ruins and The Art of the Impossible. This is another kind of odd series within the series, and this is Star Trek Invasion, The Final Fury. So I think this is the last book in the Invasion book series, which again, I think it's, yeah, book four, I think it's four books. Uh, so don't know anything about this, but obviously it takes pl place in the Voyager universe. So Star Trek Voyager Invasion, The Final Fury, which is book four. Back to the original series, we have a Star Trek novel, Blackfire, written by Sonny Cooper. And this one is one of the early ones. I don't know offhand. One thing that's kind of annoying is this is like an ex-library book. And so you have all these stickers or not stickers, but tape with these pictures on it that you can't take off. I'm sure if I really tried, I could, but I don't know, again, 50 cents. Why not? Oh, and actually... <laughs> funny enough, you're actually going to see this book again in a few minutes. So I can probably just get rid of this one. But And then two from the Star Trek Next Generation series. This is Vendetta, the giant novel. So again, this feels like a kind of a separate thing from the main uh, Star uh, Next Generation series. And then there is Star Trek Next Generation Strike Force, which is not going to tell me what book number it is because that would be much too easy. But this is written by Peter David who also wrote Battleship and wrote a, a handful of other things I actually bought this month. So Star Trek Next Generation, we have Strike Zone by Peter David. 
Moving over to Star Wars, which I know a heck of a lot more about now than Star Trek. We got two from that series, just random ones. This is book seven, which is called Solo Command in the X-Wing series. And then we have book two. I'm sorry. Yes, book two, which is Wedge's Gamble. Yeah, Wedge's Gamble. So I have book one already. So now I have books one and two and then book seven. So yeah, I'm collecting these as I go. Again, 50 cents each. So I'm going to pick them up whenever they pop up. Two more media tie-in from the Salvation Army. We have X-Files Fight the Future, which, you know, I enjoyed X-Files as a kid. I really loved the show, but I never watched it from beginning to end. There would be, you know, I tried to at points and I watched, you know, maybe a season or two through, but never from the beginning of it to the end of it. So I want to correct that at some point in my life. I really want to watch through the X-Files because I liked it so much when I was younger. And frankly, I wouldn't have picked this up because I not... (laughs) I feel like this is the death kneel when I say this. It's just, uh, I'm not going to start collecting the X-Files books. The only reason I picked this up is because it is based on the screenplay by. So this is the novelization of the film that came out in whatever it was, 98, probably, because that's when the book was released. So X-Files fight the future. And then we have, this one is actually really cool because I have the first one. I don't know if it's in this pile or if it was last month, but I have Transformers Ghosts of Yesterday written by Alan Dean Foster, who is, you know, a new fave of mine. And this is actually the official prequel to Transformers, which Alan Dean Foster actually wrote the novelization to the first film as well. So this should be really fluid with the novelization of the movie. I, of course, absolutely love the movie. Hate on it all you want. I am a humongous Shia LaBeouf fan, and of course I'm a Megan Fox fan, obviously. Um, So Transformers Ghost of Yesterday, the prequel to Transformers. Definitely going to check this one out before I read the novelization of the original film. So excited to have this one in my collection. These next three books I actually picked up from Ollie's. I went to Ollie's because the Salvation Army, by the time I got there, had closed near me. And so I wanted to, uh, you know, make the trip worthwhile. So Ollie's is right next door. So I hopped in to see if they had anything new. And lo and behold, they actually had some cool stuff. So uh, first up is, this is really cool, the deluxe junior novel of the Wonder Woman film. So this is Wonder Woman, uh, you know, based on the feature film. So I have a couple other junior novelizations that I found from the thrift store. I have, uh, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean junior novelizations, and I have the uh, prequel trilogy and the original trilogy of Star Wars in the junior novelization. So it's something I am very happy to collect. So here we have Wonder Woman, the deluxe junior edition. And uh, yeah, this looks great. So one thing I was so disappointed in myself about is if you can make it out there, it's scratched right here. I got in line. I noticed this. And so I was like, oh, let me go replace it because there was a bunch of them. So I went to replace it. I walked back there and then I got distracted by finding these next two items and I completely forgot to swap this book out like an idiot. So I have the one that's scratched. Oh, well, I want to mention the 1984. uh, I believe it's that's the year it is. That one comes out in I think it got pushed to the end of the year. But the junior novelization is actually scheduled to come out in July, the very beginning of July for 10 bucks on Amazon. I'm probably going to get it just so I can add it to my Wonder Woman junior novelization collection. Um, I don't know. This is pretty cool. So Wonder Woman, the junior novelization from Ollie's. The next two were the ones that distracted me that I found at Ollie's. And these are media tie-in based on a video game as opposed to a movie franchise that virtually everything else is here or TV franchise. Uh, So we have, I don't even know if you're going to be able to see these. So let me hold them up this way. We have Injustice. Gods Among Us Year 4 Volume 2 and Injustice Year 5 Volume 1. So if you don't know what the Injustice series is, this is a graphic novel line that is essentially the prequel to the Injustice video game, that fighting game. Uh, There are five years of it that lead up to the video game. And then there is um, like a sequel series. And then there's Injustice 2, which, of course, there is an Injustice 2 video game as well. So I absolutely adore this series. I've not finished the whole thing, but I own all of it up until... Actually, I think uh, I don't have Gods Among Us, or I'm sorry, Year 4 Volume 1, but I have the rest up to Year 4 Volume 1. Year 1, 2, and 3, there are two volumes each. Year 4, there are two volumes. And then Year 5, there's actually three volumes. So I'm only missing three total volumes to have this entire series leading up to the original video game. So this is one that I read years ago. I adore it. I want to read through it again. It's such a fun series. It's an alternate take. You know, it doesn't, it's not canon to DC uh, comic lore at all, but it's tons of fun. There's a lot of cool characters. So I love it. 
I finally came across these in hardcover, mind you, which frankly, I usually collect this series in paperback, but these were $4.99 each. So I'm not going to pass up a $4.99 comic when it's like $14 on Amazon for a paperback. That would just be silly. So really excited to read through this again. As I read through these again, maybe I can do a review series on it if you guys are interested, because I think this uh, graphic novel series is super, super underrated. Uh, I think people kind of brush it off because it's you know a prequel to a video game so they don't think much of it but it's so well written oh, his name's not on these he must have tom taylor tom taylor does these so well like ah oh, they're just fantastic i recommend these to everybody so injustice again year four volume two and year five volume one for 4.99 each from ollie's Next up are a handful of books from my local used bookstore. So very happy to be able to support them as they reopen after, you know, things are slowly getting back to normal. So first up, we have Lara Croft, Tomb Raider. And this is a novelization by Dave Stern, who is frankly somebody I don't know, but we'll see how the novelization is. Uh, this is another one that has some pictures in the middle of good old Angelina. Gotta love that. You know, I saw these movies in theaters and I really enjoyed them. I think they kind of get a bad rep now. Um, but hey, you know, if I enjoy it, I enjoy it. And that's just the way it is. So I am interested to see how this novelization will be. And out of curiosity, this is another 300 plus page uh, novelization. So novelizations are long. I just, man, some of them really are. The Star Wars ones have been super short to this point, but I guess the rest of the world of novelizations just tend to be longer. But anyway, so Lara Croft, Tomb Raider. So next up are three books from the same series. And I think these are frankly the coolest finds I was able to grab in this pickup video. So these are media tie-in again to video games as opposed to, you know, film or television. So we have books one, two, and three of the Doom series. So book one, Chapter one in a classic new space opera is Knee Deep in the Dead. And this is written by, all three of these are written by, oh man, I'm not sure how to say that. Daft Ab Hugh and Brad Lina Weaver. I will hold that up so you can actually see what it says. So first off, incredible cover. That's fantastic. The second one is Hell on Earth, which again, just an incredible cover. And then finally, Infernal Sky with again, just these covers are great. So this is so cool. So there's, this is actually a four book series. I now have the first three and I was very surprised that these books were there because I actually saw these. They were like traded in a day uh, before this whole pandemic hit. I was there and earlier that day, these books were traded in. I already had a handful of books in my hand, so I didn't want to spend the extra money on these at that time. And I thought for sure, by the time I went back, they'd be gone because this is a pretty cool find. But nope, they were all three there and ready for me. So I was very happy to get all three of these. I will say Infernal Sky, the cover is not the best, if you can see that. And kind of inside, there are some pages that are, um, well, there's some dog-eared. But uh, other than that, they're kind of on the bottom, they're dog-eared too. So what I've been trying to do is uh, keep these books pressed in between some thicker books, just so I can kind of, you know, flatten them as much as possible. But Man, this is so cool and so cheap too. Like, you know, each of these, so I pay half price. So each of these was like 250, which is awesome. So very, very excited to have these in my, in my collection. Excited to actually see, you know, what they're about and if they're any good, because, you know, obviously the, the video game series is not known for to have any depth. So we'll see if these add to that mythos at all. So very fun and very cool find. So Dooms book one, two, and three. So the rest of the books in this haul are actually from Second and Charles. There are two Second and Charles uh, stores in my area, sort of, kind of in my area. They're actually in my near my parents, which is about an hour north of me. Um, but they're close enough that the drive is absolutely worth it because you know it's one of my favorite stores, and they just always have cool things and relatively cheap. So I love going there. Uh, actually, if you know Books a Million, they're actually owned by the same parent company. So I don't know if that means anything to you, but hopefully you have a second in Charles near you because you'll probably like it as much as I do. So let's talk about some middle grade media tie-in that I grabbed. And uh, this is so cool. Like this is just absolutely up my alley. It's made for me. Cannot wait to read these. Uh, unfortunately, I have books one, two, and then four, five, and six. Book three was nowhere to be found. So I am going to have to grab that one separately. But we have the Star Wars, uh, which way, which way, that way, Star Wars Galaxy of Fear series. So this is basically Goosebumps, but set in the Star Wars universe. So first up is Eaten Alive with this incredible 
you know, hologram cover, which is just fantastic. And then we have Galaxy, I'm sorry, <laughs> City of the Dead, another one with a really cool cover. Um, it looks like these are all written by John Whitman, by the way. So oh, I should also mention that both of these were the limited edition collector series. You can kind of see in the bottom there, it says limited collector's edition. So that's really cool to find those. And then we have just the standard cover, still awesome. Uh, this is The Nightmare Machine, which is book number four. And then Ghost of the Jedi, book number five. And finally, Army of Terror, which is book number six. So I'd never heard of this book series as a kid, which is really weird to me because it's, you know, right up my alley. Like I said, it's goosebumps, but set in the Star Wars universe. So I don't know how I never heard of this, but I didn't. Uh, these were, let's see, they first started coming out in the mid 90s. Looks like 97 was book six and then book one is 97 as well. So they all probably came out around the same time. So uh, from 1997, books one, two, four, five, and six from the Star Wars Galaxy of Fear series. Please, if you have read any of these, let me know how these are. I cannot wait to start diving into this series because it's another one that I think is just going to be so darn cool and something I'm probably really going to enjoy. So Star Wars Galaxy of Fear. This next one is one that you guys will be familiar with if you've been following the channel. So I did a standalone review of the first graphic novel in this series. And then I talked about volume two in my last wrap up video. I did not like volume two, so I didn't think it was worth a standalone review. But I mentioned in both of those that I wanted to start reading the uh, short story anthologies that were a part of the V Wars Universe, written by Jonathan Mabry. And this one is actually, unfortunately, it's book two, and I don't yet have book one, but that's okay, because this was $3 from uh, Second and Charles, so had to get it. The only thing is this: there's a little rip on the cover here, but that's okay, because if you look at the book without the cover, it's beautiful, it's the same thing. And so I could go, you know, book coverless if I wanted to, but either way, V Wars, Blood and Fire, and this is uh, edited by Jonathan Mabry. So this is a continuation of the V Wars series, uh, that whole world, if you will, of the V Wars. So very, very excited to find this one because I had just been talking about it so recently that I was very happy to come across it in this, you know, Clarence bin where I found a lot of these things. So V Wars, this is number two, Blood and Fire of the short story anthologies that take place in the V Wars universe. So very cool to have this one in my collection now. This next stack, again, from Second and Charles, but these are ones that I actually paid sticker price for. So, you know, I don't know exactly what each of these books was individually, but I do know for a fact that I did not pay more than probably $2.95 for any single one of these. And most of them were probably closer to $2. It just depends on the book itself. So no, no, keep that in mind as I go through this little stack here. First up from this stack is one, another one I'm super excited that I found, and it is Pacific Rim. So this is the novelization to the incredible film, and it is written by Alex Irvine, who is a name I know quite well from picking up all these novelizations recently. So I can't wait to read this one just because the movie is so good. It's so much, just so much action, and it's just a thrill ride. It's fun to watch. So I'm hoping that the novelization kind of expands upon that a little bit and just, you know, still keeps the fun that's there and the, the brisk pace that's there of the original film. So Pacific Rim by Alex Irvine. And then we have a novelization to a horror film. This is Exorcist The Beginning. And this is written by Stephen Pizzix. So I actually have not seen The Exorcist The Beginning. I've only seen the original Exorcist film. Uh, this is one I want to revisit this whole series, but I want to read the Exorcist novel first before I dive into the rest of the Exorcist no uh, movies. Obviously, I've seen the original I can't even tell you how many times. It's wonderful. Love that movie. So, uh, you know, I was happy to have this one and add this to my collection. So The Exorcist, The Beginning, written by Stephen Pizzix. Speaking of Transformers and Alan Dean Foster, we have the novelization based on the second movie, Revenge of the Fallen. So this one should be a heck of a lot of fun. I think I have, you know, the prequel, the first movie, and then the second movie. So I'm just going to, you know, keep going through these as I find them cheap. So Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, written by Alan Dean Foster. 
Next up was another random one I happened to come across, and this is X3, The Last Stand, written by Chris Claremont. So this one, frankly, I may have gotten from eBay. I, can't, I honestly just can't remember. Um, but either way, it was cheap. And uh, so, yeah, and it was used, of course, because that's basically what all my books are. So this was written by Chris Claremont, who obviously, if you know X-Men, you will know the name Chris Claremont. So X3, The Last Stance, and I need, of course, X, uh, X-Men and X-Men 2 to complete this uh, portion of that trilogy, at least. Another Peter David novel, we have Hulk, and this is based on Ang Lee's Hulk from what year was Ang Lee's Hulk? 2003, it looks like. Now, I know this one. Frankly, both of the Hulk movies, Ang Lee's Hulk and The Incredible Hulk, I feel like are just get crapped upon all the time, and I love them. You know, I like Ang Lee's Hulk, but I love The Incredible Hulk. I think that's just such a fantastic movie that the special effects hold up to this day. I think they are awesome, and they look still great now. But anyway, Ang Lee's Hulk, you know, is pretty good as well. The special effects on this one do not hold up nearly as well. Obviously, if you've seen the movie, you think immediately of the dog scene, <laughs> and then you start laughing because that's just the way it is. But either way, like the movie, so I'm interested to see how the novelization is. And again, by Peter David, who obviously, you know, must do pretty well at these because he's written a ton of them, much like Max Allen Collins, for example. I'll show these two novelizations together because it is a uh, the original and the sequel. So we have Fantastic Four, which was written by Peter David. And then we have Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. And this was written by uh, Daniel Josephs, who's a name I don't recognize from my novelization collecting. So Fantastic Four and Rise of the Silver Surfer. So the only Fantastic Four film I've seen was the more recent one, kind of the reboot, which I think I showed that I found that novelization relatively recently as well. So I think I have like the entire Fantastic Four film franchise in novelization form, which is ridiculous, especially since I haven't even seen these two movies. So we'll see if I enjoy these. So the rest of this video is just like I'm dumbfounded that I was able to find this. So when I went back to my second and Charles, they were having a ton of deals. Uh, some I will talk about in my media pickup, but the rest I will talk about right now. So they have uh, one of the two second and Charles that I go to has a humongous inventory of Star Trek books. And because of that, they have been like putting them on the clearance rack. So for a dollar each. Not only did they put a lot of Star Trek books in the clearance rack, they put a ton of novelizations in the star, in the uh, clearance rack as well. So the rest of these books, which there are two small stacks here, I got for a dollar each. What's even more amazing is if I would have went on a Wednesday, I would have paid 50 cents each for these, which is thrift store prices. That's that's crazy. So next time I go, you bet it's going to be on a Wednesday because there are just so many more left to pick through. So anyway, the next stacks I'm going to show you here are all I, I grabbed them all for a dollar each. First up is the first in another video game related media tie-in, and this is Mass Effect Revelation. So this is the first book in a Mass Effect uh, series of novels. Now, this is one, this is actually the prequel, it says, to the video game, which is interesting. So my history with Mass Effect, I booted the game up when it was new. I played for about 15 minutes, couldn't get out of that first area where you're running around and I couldn't find like the hill to exit and I stopped playing. At the time, I worked at GameStop. And I told one of my coworkers that where I got stuck and I was teased the entire time, uh, the rest of the time I worked at GameStop because of that moment. Of course, I, I went back to it at one point later and realized, oh, you know, the hill's right here. Obviously, I don't know how I missed it when I was playing it the first time, but I never actually, you know, played any further than that. I just kind of turned it back on to see, you know, if, <laughs> if I was just being an idiot or what, which turns out I was. And so because of that, I was teased, you know, from the rest of my tenure at GameStop because of that. But anyway, that's my history with Mass Effect. So I don't know much about it. I own the entire Trill uh, I guess it's a quadrilogy now or a four game series now and I own all of those on uh, Xbox 360 and then Xbox One so now I have the first book in the novel series so we'll see how these are if I frankly if I ever get to it we'll, we'll see this is cool. Why, why does a novelization of this film even exist? I, I don't know. You tell me but we have Speed 2 Cruise Control and this was written by oh who was it written by George Ryan which I didn't say Mass Effect was written by Drew Carpitian. Drew Carpitian. So just make note of that. But anyway, Speed 2 Cruise Control written by George Ryan. So I looked and it doesn't seem to be a novelization for the first film in this franchise, which I know very well. Speed 2, I think I've only seen once. 
And so I don't remember it all that much just because it's been so long. But the first speed, I love. I love that movie. Uh, you know, Keanu is just fantastic in that. But this one, I don't know nearly as well. So I'll be interested to see how this is uh, compared to what I remember from the film. So Speed 2 Cruise Control written by George Ryan. I'm actually surprised at how many uh, video game related media tie-in things I picked up. I didn't realize it until I'm going through here. But next up is the Mortal Kombat Annihilation novelization. So I guess this isn't, well... It's based, again, on a movie that's based on a video game. So, you know, take that for what you will. So this doesn't have an author on the front, which is interesting, or the spine. I think you have to go to the first page here. Yeah, written by Jerome Priestler or Pressler. I don't know him. I don't recognize that name at all. But it's the novelization to Mortal Kombat Annihilation. So I own that now for whatever reason. This is one that I would not have picked up if it wasn't a dollar just because I don't know anything about the film. Um, but it is The Mexican. And this is the novelization by hmm, Robert Westbrook. So this has Julia Roberts in it. And I forget who the other... Brad Pitt. Julia Roberts and Brad Pitt. That's who stars in The Mexican. So again, I've not seen this, but I've heard good things about it. And it's a, a, Gore, Ber a Gore Verbinski film, who obviously is a name I recognize. So I'm sure this is probably one I would enjoy. We'll see. I don't know if I'll actually read the novelization before I watch the movie, if I ever get to the movie. But this is a pretty short novelization. This is about 200 pages, and the font is actually spread out pretty far. So this reminds me a little bit of the uh, Star Wars novelizations as being short and succinct, which I always enjoy. So The Mexican, written by... Robert Westbrook. Next up, we have two more films written by Peter David. So we have Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3. So these are very cool finds. And again, for a dollar, very happy to add these to my collection. I actually have the first one on its way. So another spoiler for my July uh, book haul. But so I'll have this complete uh, trilogy from Peter David, which is really cool. So Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3. We started with Star Trek, so we're going to end with Star Trek. And again, these are dollar Star Trek books. So this is very cool. So I'll show this one first. This is the reboot film. So Star Trek from whatever year it was, 2010. And this one actually is written by Alan Dean Foster. I mentioned that the first novelization is credited a lot to Foster, but this reboot is actually written by Alan Dean Foster. So Star Trek from 2010, the reboot film novelization. Happy to have this one. And the last of the Next Generation books I grabbed was Boogeyman, which, again, might be familiar if you saw my Star Trek uh, book haul from a couple months ago, because turns out I actually already own this one and I didn't realize it. So it was a dollar, so it's not like end of the world. So I'll just have trade-in fodder whenever I decide to trade in some books. But Star Trek Boogeyman, or I'm sorry, Star Trek Next Generation, Boogeyman. And the rest of these are all from the original series, so I'm going to kind of wrap things up here. We have the second copy of Black Fire that I found, which I don't know how I literally bought the one from the thrift store like five days before I found this one and I still picked it up like an idiot. But that's the way life goes sometimes. And then we have book number six, which is The Abode of Life written by Lee Corey. And then The Klingon Gambit written by a Robert E. Vardaman. And all of these are early numbers. I can't remember exactly what they all are, but this again, early in the series. And we have The Wounded Sky by Diane Duane, who is another very familiar name in the Star Trek uh, novel world. And then finally, last but not least in this book hall, we have Triangle, which was written by Sandra Marshak. Yep, the books all just fell, so that was fun. <laughs> anyway, Triangle, Sandra Marshak and Myrna Culbreth. So very cool. Again, it doesn't have a number on it, but it's one of the earlier ones, I believe, from the original series. All right. So that's going to do it for my June 2020 book haul part one. And this was all of my media tie-in books. So definitely check back to see the rest or part two, which are basically everything else that I grabbed that was a book that was not a media tie-in. Uh, check back for that in the coming days as well. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Cinefessions here on YouTube. And if not, thank you anyway for watching. I really do appreciate it. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for today. I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.